Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sabrina Kofer, and on behalf of Choice and ACRL, I'd like to welcome you to today's program, Artificial Intelligence and Academic Libraries, How New AI Services Can Support Your Library Users, which is sponsored by Springer Nature. Uh, today's discussion is one in a series of sponsored webinars from Choice and ACRL that addresses new ideas and developments of interest to the academic library community. Before we get started, I'd like to point out a few features of the webinar software. Uh, so all of the attendees who join the presentation are automatically muted and your cameras are off, so don't worry about generating any noise or feedback. We've got that taken care of for you. In the main area of the screen, you can follow along with the presentation materials. Uh, we are using the Q&A feature today. Uh, please use it to ask questions of our presenter. Uh, we'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation, so please do type your questions into the Q&A module as they occur to you. Uh, also note that there is closed captioning available for today's session. To toggle the automated captions on or off, please use the CC button on the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, last, please note that we are recording today's program and everyone who registered should receive a follow-up email with a link to the archive version. Uh, and with that, we're ready to get started. So I'll pass things over to today's presenter, Tamina. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Let me share my screen. And let me check out everything as this is not how it's supposed to be, but here we are. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, hello, everyone. Warm welcome from Windy, Germany. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to speak to you today. My name is Janina Krieger. I'm a project manager and books publishing solutions team in Springer Nature. And in this team, we are developing new platforms and new products and new work streams based on AI. I'm happy to give you an insight into how we see the future of scientific publishing and what innovations we have for it. Right after my presentation, there will be enough time for, to answer your questions. But before I start giving my presentation, I actually would like to ask a question to you. And therefore, Sabrina will help me out with a poll. Um, I would like to know, do you currently offer AI services at your institution? Give you a few seconds to answer the poll. All right then. Oh, I can see the results right away. This is super interesting. Okay. Then let's get started. Here's a brief overview of what I will be talking about in the next 40 minutes. I will give you a brief introduction to our approach to book solutions. Then I will talk about some solutions to one of the main problems in science we face, which is the information overload. Then I will talk about machine generated content as an interesting way to use artificial intelligence within certain limits. Then I will talk about automatic translation of books. Then I will talk shortly about our multimedia portfolio. And for the last two topics, I will give you a little insight into our development lab and explain what I think can help us explore the path to personalized books and how we work with academic institutions. So let's get started right away. Let me give you a brief introduction to our understanding of the future of scientific publishing and the approach in the field of innovation in the book sector, which is essentially a user-centric approach. Our task as a scientific publisher is to identify and develop solutions for the creation of scientific book content and services that help speed up the process of creating and processing content. And speeding up means saving time. Saving time from research lab to book, from book to practice, from practice back to research, and from research to knowledge transfer and teaching. We engage with the latest technologies innovations so that we can meet the needs of authors and readers in a digit, different digital environments with a strong and continuous focus 
on the needs of users addressing researchers, teachers, and learners in a way so that we make them feel listened to and understood where they are with their solutions that we meet with their needs. So this is the background from which we are working. So we as a science publisher have some problems to solve. Problems of our users, authors, readers, libraries, and also in general, researchers and students. And one of the main user problems that we want to help solve this, how can we deal with the tons of information that is out there? Every day, there are tons of publications, digital, printed, so digitization, obviously led to the whole information overload we are all facing and especially researchers face it and also readers once they want to understand and learn a new topic so let's imagine i'm interested in a topic as a student or researcher so i ask myself how can i dig through the mass of sources find the most relevant and not to have to read forever because i simply do not have time and of course, I only want to find trustworthy content and not just everything that is, that's just out there on the internet. Managing information overload is one of the six biggest challenges of our research user research team has identified as the most important problems we need to solve. And that can be translated into use cases. And one of the most important use cases we are looking at here is the meaningful reduction of the vast amounts of content in scientific communication and its redundancy so that scientists and students can read the most important and latest contributions in their respective research field. And as you can see, the image I'm showing here is overloading everything. So this is to present how a student researcher are feeling. So we have seen that artificial intelligence and language, natural language process, natural language processing, that's a hard one, are technologies that can help there. Technologies that are able to structure existing content, which allows us to develop and offer new products, such as machine generated books or reports or automatic clustering of subject areas. I will come to that later in much more details. And these possibilities helps to support researchers because it helps them to save time in opening up new research areas. It saves time in keeping up to date and it saves time to help overcome research silos. So we have started to offer such services to Springer authors. We send it out literature reviews as an author service. We send it out automatic generation of tables of content, automatic translation, and I will all come back to that in a minute. And finally, to answer publishers' questions, we are working with the research community to jointly shape the future of the book and book publishing. In relation to the use cases of a book, this means in concrete terms, we support authors in structuring the content while planning a book. So authors get new ideas about what content could be addressed and what they could write about in general. We send them out automatically generated literature overviews. So the whole entire research field are covered with summaries of articles and book chapters so that they can understand what is already out there and what has already been published in their research area. So they can analyze their competing literature and identify research needs. Then, of course, we want to help them to create content that can be published. So the literature overviews I just mentioned which we offer as an author service. The authors can take them, create them, use them, publish them, integrate them in their manuscript, all by using the automatically generated article summaries or references. And that brings me to the field of machine generated content. So what is this? We developed an AI tool, it is called the Dimensions Auto Summarizer, and that allows users to automatically generate literature overviews by themselves with an automatic generation of table of contents. Thereby, they can cluster the most relevant research 
and then automatically summarize it, which helps the authors to speed up the content and the creation process to identify gaps while planning a manuscript. They can improve the table of contents by identifying appropriate structure, or maybe even they identified they missed out literature they have not had on their radar before. Or they can also create hybrid books. They can write something manually and add the machine generated content. And for readers also, this is a pretty good way to get a quick overview of a research area. So just a way to scope with the information overload. Some time ago, we published a book, Lithium Ion Batteries, so the very bright one, the orange and red one. Um, this is actually a machine generated literature review of the current status of lithium ion batteries research. The book in the middle, Climate, Planetary and Evolutionary Science, combines human and machine content. Here, the author always wrote an own introduction to every chapter, which was followed then by the machine generated content. And on the left hand side, you can see another example where we applied the auto clustering of our tool to structure the book content and the table of manuscript and to identify additional material. So for us, it's not just about the whole machine generated text. It's ultimately something in between about the whole scale between human content and machine generated content. And we are especially interested in those middle ranges to learn and see how human and machine can interact and how and where the algorithm can support the authors in content creation. And we think those intermediate sections where the human and the author are engaging with each other, here's the real value. Since September last year, we also offered these machine generated reviews as an author service. We were just sending it out to the authors to have them supported in the beginning of their writing phase. We were then collecting feedback from the authors and they were all very happy with it. And it all looks very promising, especially if you're just started working on the book manuscript and for junior researchers. Um, the service offers an easy entry into the writing process. And it also provi provides a quick and comprehensive, co comprehensive overview of a research field, also from a very interdisciplinary perspective. So the book I was showing before, the blue one, Climate, Planetary and Evolutionary Science, always also has an interdisciplinary approach, which was supported by the reviews. And just to mention it, by the way, it was exactly that technology that helped us to publish a COVID-19 report with up-to-date article as early as March 2020, which was very appreciated at a time that we could deliver auto summaries of published content about the topic right away. And now I wanna show you how this machine generated literature overview R's are actually working because I guess it's hard to imagine what I'm actually talking about. That's why I would guide you through the process and basically create a machine generated literature overview together with you right now. So how do we get started? We start at a platform which is called SN Insights. SN Insights is a customized version of Dimensions. Dimensions is freely available. Everyone can access it. There are a lot of publishers in there and you can see a lot of publications. We have to start in SN Insights. That's why I have a team which is starting the process at SN Insights for authors for people who are interested, for institutions whatsoever, because we cannot grant access to SN Insights because it's our own database. Now, let me guide you through it. Just have to finish my presentation here and go to this. Can I get a, please a quick thumbs up if you can still see my screen? Perfect, okay, thanks Sabrina just to be sure. Um, this is SN Insights. This is our internal database. Here we have all the information available about every publication we have, whether articles, book content, open access data, everything. That's what I said. We cannot let you on the platform, sorry for that. Um, 
but we take over the task I'm doing now. So you see, currently we have more than 14 million publications. So now we have to filter out the information so we can find and create a data set which is suitable for your need, for your topic, for your interest. And we have some ways how to filter out. And we have to get to an amount of data set which is smaller than 3000 publications because the platform where the auto summarization is happening can only handle three, less than 3000 publications at once. And I feel having 3000 publications about one topic is actually quite a lot. So we always recommend to stay with less, less than 1000 and you already get a good overview. And um, we could start with keywords. Um, if you send me some keywords, I could start inserting them. We would have to create a blockchain. We would uh, work with operators such as and and or and brackets, etc. And then we could do a keyword query. I could also copy paste an abstract in here, and then the system would look for similar abstracts. Or I could copy paste some DOIs in here. So if you, for example, would be aware of some publications where you say, okay. This is a great publication with a great abstract, which can be the basis to filter out the data set. I can copy paste it in here as well. So we could work with that. And then we would use some more filters. For example, publication year. You could, for example, tell me, I want to have an overview about topic X, Y, Z, about the past three, four, five, six years, whatever you tell us. Then we could also um, filter for research categories. So we stay in the same interest in the same subject area. So here we would have some, oh, of course, now this is happening, um, some field of research. Now you see my email address. Um, sorry that I kicked out of my system. This is a thing about live presentations, but everything is fine. <laughs> um, so we could filter out, this was what I was showing you, field of research um, to stay in the subject area you need. And what we would also filter, and this would happen without you telling us, we would filter for articles only because we are, can only republish auto summarizations of article content. But if you say you want to just have it for research purposes to get started with your manuscript, we could also include book content. But we are limited here. We are limited to our own content. This will only cover Springer Nature content. And if you want to include the auto summaries in your manuscript, it would be only auto summarizations of articles. And if you want to use it to get started with your book project, we could also include book content. So here are already some limitations of the overviews. And once we would be done, we would report, um, we would export the results. That's always a huge Excel list. And then we would upload the Excel list to another platform, which is called the Dimensions Auto Summarizer. I already prepared a small query. Let me show it to you here. I just used libraries and digital, which is super superficial. I'm fully aware of that, but I just wanted to show you for demonstration purposes. I was entering those two keywords. I filtered English language only, original paper as an article type only, and then I filtered the field of research. And then out of the 14 million publications we are currently having, I limited and created a data set of 800 48 articles which are related to that topic. And after that, I exported the results and then I uploaded it to the Dimensions Auto Summarizer. What you are seeing here could also be done by you. So if you're interested, we would be happy to set you up with a guest account. After we created the overview for you, upload it here, you would be able to jump in and create your own manuscript. So what I'm doing here could be done by you as well. So I uploaded the project already. And what then would be done by you would be, I will not come to the details now um, because this can all be explained later. And if you would join the platform, there are small introduction videos which explain everything. But here we have now the possibility to choose how many chapters you wanna have the overview being 
consistent of how many subsections and how many documents should be auto summarized. So for example, let's say the review should be three chapters, two subsections and five documents. I press the blue button and here we have already a manuscript being created. We have a keyword approach. This is how the algorithm is working. I don't want to boring you with technical blah, blah. So I keep it short. Um, I will now just open. We said two subsections. We said five documents. And now the algorithm identified the five best articles which are related to these keywords which have been identified being related to the keywords libraries and digital. And then you can do much more with here. You can also filter your data set again, but let's just say I would be fine with it. I could create a manuscript, click the blue button. And now I have the overview ready to be sent, sorry, to be downloaded. And then I wanna show you how this is looking like. And then we have the overview ready. We have always the heading. We always link to the original DOI. We always link to the originators. We give full credits to them. And then you get the auto summary. And the interesting about the auto summary is that you do not get one big auto summary about an article or a chapter, but you get tiny summaries because we keep the original structure of the article or the um, sorry, chapter, and then you get tiny auto summaries for every subsection. So here we have the abstract summary, we have the introduction summary, and so on. And at the end of each auto summarization, we give a full acknowledgement to the originator. We are fully transparent what we are doing here, and the originators get also the full credit in the publication. So this is a nutshell how we create a machine-generated literature overview. But I have a team as a backup, we have um, an expert for every subject area helping to create an overview. So you, there is a human looking over it before we send it out to you. So coming back to this human machine interaction, we need the humans to look at it and we need the authors to check it most importantly. So this is how machine generated literature overview is being done. Let me again share my screen. Okay, here we go. And now, as we were talking about the overviews, they can be used then from the authors after we have sent it out to them for many reasons. They can use it, as I said, to discover new content, to compare their research, just to get a quick start into their writing process. And in the end, if they would like to have it, they can always include the overviews in their manuscript. So we leave it to the authors what they want to do with the overviews. And now I would be super interested. Would your research, researchers at your institutions would be interested in a machine generated literature overview? Polls are always open for 30 seconds. So just waiting that they are closed automatically. That's an interesting result. Thank you so much for answering and taking the polls. This is super helpful and interesting for us. Now I would like to jump ahead into the next topic, which are the Sorry, I have so many windows open here that sometimes if I click something, it's not working, but now it's working. The book's auto translations. This is something we offer for almost two years now. Um, so what we have done here, we have integrated automatic translation into the process of book production and publication, and also established it as a standard service. By automated translations, we want to significantly expand the readership of a book, which then becomes part of our global ebook collections in English. In English. And we want to significantly increase the use and impact of books. 
as a translation service, we are currently using DeepL, the best technology for automatic translation. We are always fully transparent that the books are a DeepL auto translation. Doing the automatic translations solves a lot of problems as the human translation often is very cost and time consuming, which lead to the fact that many projects never get translated, which is super sad because there are so many great projects out there which deserve to be translated. And after completing the pilot phase last year, we are currently in the process of scaling up the service. And I can already show you some examples we are very, very proud of. And we are always doing the auto translations only if the authors are agreeing to do so. We never do it without their permission. They are always involved. They always check the auto translations themselves. And if not, if they cannot check it their own, they often um, ask for someone to do it over them or they simply say, I cannot check it myself and then we do not do it. So nothing happens without the author approval. Um, often authors are just super happy that their project is translated and to be recognized and sent to an international community, to international readerships, because a human translator would often be too, ex too expensive. So more examples here. Um, we are very proud of that we have these auto translations being implemented right now. They are fully standard from German, English, and English to German. But of course, there are also more languages which have to be considered. So um, we also established auto translations as an author service, which brings me to the next point. Um, this is a new service which we also have up and running. And this is also based on user research because we noted, and basically the research noted, that there's a large proportion of researchers and research scholars that are not native English speakers. And they do not feel comfortable writing in English, but they have to write in English. So this is no longer a problem because we can take that book manuscript in the original language and then automatically translate it into English and we send it back to the author so they can prove it, read it and check it. And then they can use this as their final manuscript and submit this as their final manuscript. So authors can write in a native language they feel the most comfortable in. This service is at no cost for the authors. Um, we are offering this for free. And here you can also see some two sample titles, um, one originally written in Chinese and one originally written in Portuguese. So um, we have a lot of Chinese, Japanese, and South American authors uh, who are happy that they do not have to write in English anymore. Um, so I really want to highlight this service, which is now a standard service. Now I want to come to the next portfolio we are offering, our multimedia packages and books. And I would like to start this part with a general statement, because all the time I'm talking to you about books, but in a very broad sense, because books are much more than just text and pictures on pages anymore. We increasingly combine books with other media, such as video, audio, flashcards, online courses, and other documents such as slides, supplementary material, or content such as programming code, and also three-dimensional objects, virtual reality, glossaries, etc., etc. Um, and I think the most important issue here is what I would call connecting the different resources. The book will always be a strong anchor for trustworthy, robust, and sustainable knowledge, which as a long form content enables deep understanding, deep reflection and discussion, but then combined with a variety of related media, such as video, audio, etc., to enrich knowledge, to learn and to connect with, to train with, to apply, and also to use and practice. And whether we, we, we say book with audio, book with virtual reality content, book with online course or whatever, everything comes always with a book. And it's also secondary because ultimately the user will decide anyway which content he or she would like to use. 
And I will not get much more deeper into that topic. I would just want to show you some examples what is already possible. Um, many of our books are now available with video and audio streaming, always integrated in inline on Springer link, linked with the PDF. And of course, we're not forgetting about the printed books. We, you can access always the additional content with your smartphone or tablet using the so-called More Media app we have developed. Um, and this is a great example of men, augmented material here, what you are seeing. We published alone in 2021, 500 books with such content. We are currently having more than 6,000 6, books being published, including audio and video content. We also make books with flashcards. Flashcards are um, electronic index cards, such as learning cards. And um, it's a digital question answer solution app, and you can access it via browser or mobile app. And it's also connected to the printed book. We also publish books that give learners access to the corresponding online course. And we expect this combination of book and online course to increase in the future a lot. Then we also have books combined with virtual reality training. And here we are just at the beginning. Um, but I think as the technology develops and also the virtual reality devices become much more convenient, we will for sure see more projects in that area. And we think this is a very promising opportunity for solid knowledge and practical training and applications, such as in the medical approaches uh, for um, trainings for laboratories, et cetera. And we wanna also highlight research data because it becomes increasingly common and often explicitly demanded to publish not only the research data, but also the underlying sorry, not only the research, but also the underlying research data in the various research data repositories. Our books are ready to include such research data links to make it as easy as possible for the readers to access the research data. So, and last but not least, I wanna introduce a platform to you, which is not live yet, comes fresh out of our innovation lab and is called the Scriptinator, which is our path towards a personalized book. Gotta say the name Scriptinator is not final yet. We are still in discussion. Um, so please be not confused if we have this pro product released this year with a different name. <laughs> so let me explain the Scriptinator to you. We again did user research. And it's often the results which are interesting when you think, okay, this obviously has been obvious, which is students have little time and money, students wanna pass their exams and students learn with their own notes taken down during a lecture, especially if no lecture slides or scripts are available. So what we are currently developing is a tool to find content for students who are preparing for exams, knowing that putting together all the learning materials and also collecting reliable materials is very time consuming. So this service is a way to enrich students' lecture notes, sorry, lecture material. So this is currently how it's looking like. This is the Scriptinator page where you can then log in. After you have logged in, you can upload your lecture note as a PDF or a PPT format. And then the algorithm detects automatically the most important and relevant keywords from your uploaded lecture notes based on a keyword extraction model. You can also input keywords manually. So if you do not have a content which can be uploaded, you can insert keywords manually. And then it's looking like this. On the left-hand side here, you have the uploaded lecture slide. You have the keywords which have been identified by the algorithm highlighted. On the top left side, you have all the keywords being listed. And if you hover over them, a definition pops up. And then you here get the chapter recommendation. Here we have the perfect fitting chapter to this keyword. So 
Again, here you have the uploaded material, which our glossary and definition back and the highlighted keywords. And if the algorithm did not identify keyword, you could highlight it yourself. And as I said, you have then here, if you hover here, you have the definitions and here you have the paragraphs out of the perfect fitting chapter. And if you would click here on the blue hyperlink, you will be linked to Springer link where you can, if you're connected to um, your university or institution, which has, a, um, which has our subject collections, then you can download the full book. This is available in, will be available in German and English. This is just a German example. So for now, I would like to ask my third question. Would your institution benefit from the service I have just introduced? The machine generated literature overviews, the um, auto summarizer, sorry, the auto translation, including the scripting data, et cetera. And who would benefit from those services? Thank you so much for also filling out that poll. Super interesting. And now I'm coming to my last topic. Sorry. Now it's working. Um, and this last topic also closes the circle of my narrative from, narrative from the beginning, when I introduced our approach uh, to book solutions as a user-centric approach. Our user-centric approach is exactly the reason why we introduced our workshop format that we call publishing labs. What is a publishing lab? Publishing labs are workshops with selected academic partners, institutions, whoever is interested, on a set of questions related to research publishing, such as how to accelerate from the lab to the book. Um, we are doing it because we really want to understand the current needs which are out there. For example, we had a publishing lab last year with a university in Germany from an excellence cluster. And here we noted a need for more interdisciplinary networking. And then the result of the lab was that we invented a new ser series, which is called tr Cross Track. Um, press release will be out tomorrow, I think, because this is a new project category, which now has been formed. And um, Cross Track will now be a series where there's always interdisciplinary reviews. So this is a result of the research lab. Super interesting because we really want to understand what are the current needs out there? How can we support as a publisher to fill in the needs and answer the questions? If you're interested in doing such a research lab together with us, we're super happy about it and would be happy to organize such an event. And this was it. Thank you so much. And by coming to an end, I would like to ask my last question. Um, how do you see AI services, like I introduced, fitting your institution needs? Thank you so much for filling out this last question. And thank you so much again for having me and for your attention. And I'm now super curious and interested to see your questions and I'm very happy to answer them. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, thanks so much, Nina. Yeah, uh, like she said, we have plenty of time for questions. Looks like we are, looks like we already have a few popping up, so. I just encourage everyone to send in your questions if you have any. Um, yeah, we'll jump right in. We have a question 
here from Danielle who asks, what happens if the author isn't, isn't able to proof their work? Does Springer Nature do this for them for free or is it an additional cost? I think this is referenced to earlier in the presentation, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> totally, totally, yeah. Um, I guess this is about the auto translations when the author says he's not aware of the language and he would like to be auto translated into German or English. Yes, we help out here. So if the author says, I really want to have my project, for example, being auto translated from English to German, but he's not aware of German and also has no friend or whatever, whoever would like to look over it, because that's often the case that the author asks actually uh, some friends of theirs to proofread it, then we would help them out. We would help them out. And um, if they agree of basically transferring all the um, trust to us and trust to the external person to prove the content because it's the author work and we always want to have the author check his or her own content but if the author is willing to hand over this responsibility this is the word i was looking for then we will um take over for the author and we ask for an external person to do that yes but we were happy so lucky so far because for German to English, it was very convenient because most of the authors do know English and are aware of English and can check their auto translation to English. Of course, for German to English, it's a little bit different because not everyone knows German, obviously. <laughs> right, got it. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, we have another question here from Tatiana who asks, do you also offer auto translation of articles? This is a question related to the journal colleagues. I'm coming from the book side. Um, I'm aware that the colleagues are working also with auto translations. I'm aware of that they are doing it, but I'm sorry I cannot answer this question as they have their own process. I know they are working with auto translations, but I'm not fully sure how they integrated auto translation in their project processes and workflows. But I know they are working with it. I'm happy to answer this question later. I can definitely ask the colleagues if they would be of interest. Um, so this question can be answered. I, I know that there's something happening, but I'm not really sure as journal colleagues working differently than we on the book side. There are other rules. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay, um, let's see. We have another question here uh, that asks, does, does citationality fit into any of your discovery models? Citationality. Um, we can, first thing that pops into my head when we, um, speaking about citations, the machine generated literature overview platform I was showing you, the dimensions auto summarizer. Here we can also filter for citations. For example, if you want to have an overview about a topic, which is XYZ, and you want to only have high uh, articles which are cited a lot, we can filter for that. So this is obviously definitely taken into account. Um, if you, for example, say, I only want to have cite highly cited articles being auto summarized and also um, for the citation of the overviews themselves. We are fully transparent about the overviews. We make clear in the whole book if, the, if an author includes the auto summaries, how we did it, how the project is working, about the machine. We give all the information. We give the full credit to the originator. And we always make clear that this is an auto summary of this or that original article. So if it's cited, then obviously we have to refer to the original to give them the full credit. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. Uh, Laura asks, when do you anticipate the scriptinator being launched? There's a date that's, for that. <laughs> that's a great question. We will have a soft release, I guess in two months. We make it available for everyone for free to test it out. Um, this will be like a soft release and an official go-to-market. We hope it happens at the end of this year. Um, but first we will make it live, so to say, so everyone can test it 
um, and the go live, I'm sorry, go to market will then hopefully happen at the end of this year. Um, yeah, great. Okay, uh, sort of a follow on to that, uh, Michelle asks, can the scriptinator be used on an individual basis or does the whole class need to be on it? We focus on the individualization because what we aim to do is that at the end, the user can download the scriptinator output and basically have his or her own book, have his or her own lecture notes with the definitions on the side and the chapter recommendations. And then in the end, we would like to have it downloadable so that you as a student have it as an output and you can learn it. And we would like to have the option that you could share it. So you could share it with your class, with your students, with your friends, so you could all engage with each other. And this is planned. That's why we are saying we want to have it as a, our way to a personalized book, because the output of the scriptinator should be downloadable and shareable. But we focus on the individualization part because you upload your lecture notes, your manuscript, not manuscript, your script, your whatever you have as a learning material. And then we want to enrich your material with our content. And then, of course, it can be shared and et cetera. Interesting fact is that we also learned from user research that students often learn it then in printed version. So that's why it is kind of a um, personalized book at the end because create it digitally and then you download it and read it on a printed version like a book. But it should, book, but it should also be readable and downloadable and shareable on your digital devices. Right. Okay. Um... We have a question here from William uh, who says, can you clarify the scope of coverage for the AI generated literature reviews? Uh, you mentioned that some parts only included Springer Nature articles, but Dimensions uh, does cover other publishers. Mm -hmm. So if you go on Dimensions, you can have, you can filter out your information, which every publisher provides for the public but we have to start from our end on SN Insights because here we then basically um, get all the data from our repository because yes, we can only work with our own um, content for legal and technical reasons. Legal reasons, of course, we can only use our own data. We cannot work with the um, competitor's data. Um, and also for technical reasons, we have to have our data in A++ to have it then being moved to the dimensions auto summarizer. So the advantage is if you do not wanna wait for us to create the query for you on SN Insights, you could start on dimensions, filter out Springer Nature content only, and create your own data set, so to say, your own query, which has to be created for the data set, which then will be auto summarized. We could work with the keyword chain, a blockchain, and query you created, and we would basically copy paste it into SN Insights. But we have to start in SN Insights because as we export the results in SN Insights, we get all the data collected, which then gets uploaded to Dimensions Auto Summarizer. And yeah, limitations are of course our own content that if you wanna republish it, that we can only use um, journal content. And besides that, there are no limitations. We are happy to have you on the platform. So you could try it out and um, tell us how, how you like it and use it for your purposes. Of, of course, would be great to have a book out of it, um, but there's actually at the beginning no scope because we just started the service, the author service in September, 2021. And we have now much more book projects in the pipeline, which include the auto summarizations. So we just started. Great. Okay, let's see. Some questions here. Um, let's see, someone asked, uh, can you cross-reference articles by shared citation? Uh, is that a feature, like locating articles that cite the same articles? Oh, locate articles which share. Sabrina, where's the question so I can search it because I want to read, or could you read it out again, please? Yeah, sure. 
um, to the uh, bottom. Uh, can you cross reference articles by shared citation? Is that a feature located mm -hmm. in articles that cite the same articles? Would be super interesting to have the feature um, by shared citation. Actually, this is not in there yet, but we, the um, auto summarizer identifies if an article has already been mentioned or not. So you will never have the same article appearing in one auto summarization, um, in one auto summarization project. But no, we cannot cross reference articles by shared citation. This is not possible yet. And um, locating articles that cite the same article is also not possible because we use an abstractive, sorry, an abstractive summarization model based on a keyword approach. So what happens? We upload the query we created in SN Insights, and then we upload it to Dimensions Auto Summarizer. And then the algorithm in the Dimensions Auto Summarizer is identifying the keywords which are in the back end of the articles, which are related to, to your back end. So it's a keyword approach. It's a keyword connected algorithm. And then we can filter out highly cited articles, highly downloaded articles, and articles with an alt, met, alt metric score. That's possible, but we could not intervene in, intervene in those as it is a keyword approach. Got it. Okay. Um... Yeah, we have a couple of questions in here about uh, transparency and plagiarism, which I know you talked about earlier in the presentation. Um, so someone asked, with regard to using the AI-generated literature reviews in the final manuscripts, what kind of ethical implications does this have? Thinking about plagiarism, transparency, transparency, is there a way to cite the AI process? Uh, would it be possible for the same AI-generated literature reviews to be published by two different authors. So two questions. Yeah, thank you. For, thank you for that question. Um, of course, if you would run now the auto summary through a plagiarism check, it would show red signal because the auto summarization model uses original sentences. Um, we make it fully transparent at every point of the book. And at every stage, if we republish the AI generate literature overview, what is this about? How is the machine working? How is the algorithm working, etc.? You have the subtitle at every book. This is a machine generated literature overview. We mentioned it in the back cover copy text. We are fully transparent of what we are doing. We are allowed to republish the journal content from a legal perspective. We are fully covered here. We are not allowed to republish our book content, even though it's our own content. And um, But if an author signs a book contract with Springer Nature, he's, he's um, fully the owner of the content. Um, we are not allowed to republish it without his knowledge. Um, the art journal contracts are a little bit different. So we are allowed to republish auto summarizations of journal content. We are fully, fully safe from a legal perspective. Plagiarism is safe because we are fully transparent. And I know that there was another question open. They were, the question were consistent of many questions. Maybe you could read it out again, Sabrina. Sure. Um, yeah, it was, is, is there a way to cite the AI process? And would it be possible for the same AI generated literature review to be published by two different authors? That, thank you so much, Sabrina. Um, regarding the last one, would it be possible? That would be super interesting. Um, I feel it would never be possible because the whole journey starts in as an insight. And depending on the keyword chain and the approach you are starting in as an insight, do you start with keywords? Do you start with DOIs? Do you start with an abstract approach? This will all lead to different output. It's like an equation you've got to start with in, in as an insights. It, it's different operators working together. So I feel if we have two authors who want to do an overview about the same topic, there will be a totally different overview at each end because every author also wants to have a different focus within the AI generated review. And also because of the platform, it's adjusting constantly. You change one setting and everything is adjusting right away. 
based on the author focus and also because the platform is constantly working and constantly adjusting. For example, if we, if I now do a query in SN Insights, in a week it will be totally different because of new publications popping up in the meantime. So every new approach is different because also every SN Insights query is different depending on the keywords you are giving to me. As what I did, I just inserted digital and libraries. And I said libraries and digital. If I would change that to digital and libraries, totally different overview. Um, that's how the machine is working. So I would answer the second question with no. And yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, a few more minutes. Um, See, I just want to note for our audience that uh, we will be sending the questions uh, to Janina. So any follow up, uh, you should get an answer for them if we don't answer them here. Um, let's In the meantime, Sabrina, I would also like to send out again my email address for everyone. So whoever is interested in receiving an overview, jumping on the platform, trying it out, please reach out to me. I'm happy to introduce you to the team and to have an overview being created for you. Super curious to hear about your feedback, how you would engage with it. And it brings you some new knowledge, brings up some publications or gaps or anything which has not been on your radar before. So very happy to receive any email. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that should be there for everyone in the chat. Um, See. Maybe um, Linda quickly asks, do you offer the literature review summarization optimization for journal articles rather than books? Yeah. Um, as I said, I have to include um, journal articles only because of legal reasons. Um, if you want to republish it, if you say I want to include the auto summarization in my manuscript, so they will be published, then I have to limit them to journal articles only because of legal reasons. But if you want to say I want to use it for my manuscript to get started, to identify niches, to be inspired, to um, get to know other colleagues in that field, to see what they are addressing, to compare researchers and methods then I'm happy to introduce book content as well. It's only the fact if you want to republish it, I gotta, if we publish it, I gotta limit it to book content, sorry, journal content only. Um, yeah. Got it. Um, let's see, maybe to end on, um, I know the script creator is still in the works, um, uh, but Bruce asks, uh, lecture notes are an interesting kind of intellectual property. Um, so have you discussed or worked on like the author's rights of lecture notes? Like how does that work for the description later? Okay, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I, we imagine the scriptinator of jumping over the process of going into the library and searching for the perfect book. The only thing what we are doing with the content is scanning it with our keyword extraction model and then suggesting the perfect fitting paragraph. We would also be happy to support professors and teachers when they want to create their lecture notes and their reading lists to engage with us as well. They could create a lecture, sorry, a reading list with a scriptinator as well. That would be also happy. So I feel it is different, not, sorry, not a big difference if the author, sorry, if a student goes into the library and says, I need content, could I please, uh, could you please suggest me content what is out there? We basically do the same thing with the scriptinator. We just suggest content to your lecture notes. Of course, only our own content. That's the major limitation. And of course, you cannot compare the scriptinator to a library. I hope you you got what I what I wanted to example with this um, comparison. Um, it's just we do not do anything with the lecture notes. We only scan the keywords and then show a chapter suggestion. 
And if the student is connected in their institution or in their university, they often have our full packages. So then the student can just download the um, ebook anyways. Um, so that's basically it. We do not do anything with the lecture notes. So no, no nothing about the, um, what was the impression? Um, full credits to the uh, to the originator of the lecture notes, we do not do anything. You could also upload just a simple um, PowerPoint presentation. Like I could also now upload my PowerPoint presentation and I would get a um, suggestion of keywords because it just we just need a PDF format or PowerPoint presentation format. So it can be basically anything. Um, and then we do suggestions. But of course we wanna focus on the lecture notes to support the students um, to find perfect material to for their learning to pass the exam. I hope that answers the question. Great, yeah, that was super helpful. Um, legal property was the word. So this legal property is still to um, to the originator of the lecture notes. We just want to help the students get their material ready to pass the exam. Got it. Okay, great. Looks like we're right at the end of the hour. Um, so thanks so much to Janina for taking the time to present for us today. And thanks to the attendees for your questions and comments. Um, I'd like to remind our viewers that we did re record today's program. So be on the lookout for a follow-up email from Choice and ACRL with a link to the recording. Uh, also, if you have a few minutes after the presentation to fill out a brief survey, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, so thanks again to all of you out there for joining us. Uh, we hope you learned something new from the session and we hope to see you again in the near future on another webinar. Thanks so much everyone. Have a wonderful day ahead.